Hey guys, welcome back from spring break. Hope you had a really great time. We're going to get started on food chains, food webs, and trophic levels, um, which is just the cycle of energy, how it goes from one thing to the next. And just a review, we're talking about ecology. This is our new unit, ecology. Um, ecology is the study of the relationships between all organisms and their environment. And that is the biotic, which is the living things, and the abiotic, which is the non-living things in an area. So you have been talking about photosynthesis and respiration. You've been going through modules and assignments and taking quizzes about photosynthesis and respiration. So now we're gonna talk about how photosynthesis and respiration blend together and how that energy transfers. All living things need energy to live, to metabolize, that's a new word. Whenever you're living and breathing and respiring, um, doing respiration, it's um, called metabolize. So where do you get your energy to live and breathe and think? Think about it for a second. What is that word? What did we talk about? Where do you get your energy? It is from respiration in every single cell of your body. You breathe in the air, the oxygen. You take in nutrients from your digestive system. The blood delivers all these oxygen and nutrients to every cell of your body to make ATP, which is the, um, the unit of energy to make you have the ability to think and move and repair your organs and your cells and to fight off infection. Remember the law of conservation. We've talked about this so many times. The energy is never created or destroyed, but recycled into something different. So we have the law of conservation of energy. We have the law of conservation of matter. We have the law of conservation of mass. And they all say the same thing, that these things are never created or destroyed, but they're just recycled into something different. So we have talked about how we can recycle plastic. Um, plastic is made of monomer units that are all hooked together into polymers and they're made of petroleum hydrocarbons. Remember this unit that we talked about and we recycle, reduce, reuse and recycle the plastic into something new. So they will melt it and they'll reform it into something new. And that's how we can help save our planet from being over um, po polluted. You can recycle paper. You can blend up the paper products into a sludge and form it into something new. That's how you recycle paper. You can recycle glass in the same way. You put the recycling bottles in a glass container. It goes to a factory and is remelted and formed into new bottles. So we can recycle all these things. And that is kind of how energy is, is recycled as well. So energy flow. There are types of energy changing and moving through the environment all the time. Energy goes from one thing to the next to the next constantly. And we show this energy flow by an arrow. It doesn't always have to be a red arrow, but in this presentation, I've used red arrows to get your attention so that you know that when you see a red arrow, you're going to say the little phrase, gives its energy to. So, the arrow points in the direction that the energy moves. So you can't say one thing eats another thing because that's going to confuse you. So don't get confused. I want you to replace the arrow to um, the arrow for the quote gives its energy to. And then you're going to do just fine on understanding this if you do that. Energy must flow constantly through an ecosystem for the system to remain stable. If energy stops flowing through an ecosystem, then there's a problem and it's unbalanced and you have to try to fix it. So the leaves give their energy to a grasshopper, which gives its energy to a frog, which gives its energy to a snake, which gives its energy to a hawk, which gives its energy to... so. The leaves get their energy from the sun. So the sun gives its energy to the leaves. So the leaves are eaten by the grasshopper, but you can't say that or you're going to get confused because you're going to think, well, the grasshopper eats the leaves. So you need to remember the arrow points in the direction of where the leaves give their energy to. So the leaves give their energy to the grasshopper. So the leaves here give their energy to a caterpillar and the caterpillar gives its energy to the spider. 
The spider gives its energy to the frog. The frog gives its energy to the lizard. The lizard gives its energy to the fox. And the fox gives its energy to the hawk. So do you see how that flows through? And of course, they're giving their energy to something because that something is eating them, right? But you need to always replace the arrow with gives its energy to. Remember, where do plants get their energy? They do the process of photosynthesis in the organelle called the chloroplast with the pigment called chlorophyll, turning everything green. Uh, plants take in carbon dioxide and water and sunlight, and they produce oxygen and sugar, which is C6H12O6. This is the process of photosynthesis. So this is how the sun gives its energy to a plant. And where do animals get their energy from? They do the process of respiration in the organelle in every cell called the mitochondria. Um, we take in oxygen in our lungs and sugar from our digestive system. We produce carbon dioxide and water vapor, which we exhale. And we produce ATP energy that helps us to move and metabolize and repair our cells. So the inner, it says, show the energy flow from the sun to the humans. This is just, <laughs> don't make fun of my cow, please. But this is how we get energy to do the things we need to do. The sun gives its energy to a plant. The plant undergoes photosynthesis and gives its energy to a cow. A cow turns into a hamburger, a yummy, delicious hamburger. And then the hamburger gives its energy to us. So we can undergo the process of respiration. We turn that hamburger into glucose with our stomach and our digestive system. We break it into the individual atoms so that we can get ATP energy for thinking and learning for maintaining our body temperature. We are warm blooded animals, so we have to use our internal metabolism to maintain a body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. We also use that energy for mechanical means. We ride bicycles, we run, we jump, we play basketball if we're lucky. Um, so all of these things are represented with a food chain. A food chain is a model used to show the transfer of energy and matter among organisms. It shows the relationship among organisms. So a food chain is just one simple way that I've been showing you how energy moves through um, a certain number of organisms. And many food chains together make up a food web. So we have a food chain and then we have a food web. So go back to the food chain. The sun gives its energy to the flower. The flower gives its energy to a caterpillar. The caterpillar gives its energy to the frog. The frog gives its energy to whoops, a daisy, the snake. The snake gives its energy to the owl. That's a food chain. This is a food web. So all of these arrows mean give their energy to. So the berries give their energy to a green fly. Whoops. The berries give their energy to the bud. The buds have uh, nectar, and the nectar is what the butterflies eat. The berries give their energy to the bird. The, bu the berries give their energy to the grasshopper. Also, there's another food source. This is a plantain. So the plantain gives its energy to the grasshopper and the mouse and the rabbit. And so then all that energy is transferred into different insects and animals and organisms, which give their energy to other organisms. So all of these things together is called a food web. You can see how they're all interconnected, very complicated way. And so it's kind of like the web of a spider, how it kind of is all connected. The important thing to know here is that if one thing disappears out of the food web, then all of the other organisms are affected by that. So if the berries somehow disappear because of a disease or they were over harvested, then all of these little organisms are going to not have any energy from the berries. So they're going to either have to adapt and find another food source or they're going to die. And if these guys, these little insects die, then it's going to affect these things, all of these actually. And if all of these organisms die, then it's going to affect all of these. So you have to think about how if one species disappears out of a out of an environment, out of an ecosystem, then it, a lot of different organisms are going to be affected by that. 
Um, so we're going to talk about heterotrophs and autotrophs now. An autotroph, if we look at the word auto is the prefix, troph is the suffix. So troph is like trough. And so that's where animals get their food is from a feeding trough. So trough means food. Auto is like an automobile drives itself. So auto is means itself and trough means food. So an autotroph gets its energy from the sun through photosynthesis. So autotrophs are all green things. The survival of any ecosystem is dependent upon the producers capturing energy from the sun. So these guys are autotrophs and they are known as producers because they produce the food for other animals. And how do they do that? That's right, through photosynthesis. So autotrophs are green plants that use photosynthesis to produce the food for other animals. So anything that is green is an autotroph. A plant, we have algae that grows in the water, and we have phytoplankton. Most of the oxygen produced for our whole solar, our whole um, earth is produced by phytoplankton, which are really, really tiny microscopic organelles, organisms that live in the oceans. And we don't see them and we don't think about them, but they are the reason that we have oxygen to live, along with the other green things, but mostly phytoplankton. A heterotroph, in contrast to an autotroph, hetero means different, and troph means food. So heterotrophs have to get their food from different organisms. They're from other organisms. So they cannot produce their food through photosynthesis, so they have to get it from another organism. A heterotroph is also a consumer. In contrast to what we said, um, an autotroph is a producer. So you're either a producer or a consumer. Which one are you? That's right. You're a consumer because you can't do photosynthesis. Um, consumers consume other organisms in order to live, to get energy to live. So consume means to eat, right? Um, they cannot make their own food through photosynthesis, so a deer is going to eat greenery, which is an autotroph, but the deer is a heterotroph because it can't do photosynthesis. It has to eat the plants in order to get energy. The caterpillar is a heterotroph. The rabbit is a heterotroph. These are all consumers because they have to consume or eat things in order to get their energy. There are four different types of heterotrophs. There are carnivores. They eat meat only. Herbivores, they eat plants only. Omnivores eat both meat and plants. And detritivore, everybody say detritivore. Detritivore. They are the decomposers and they eat dead stuff. So these are different types of heterotrophs. Probably in elementary school, you have learned about carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, detritivores. A carnivore pizza at Ogden Pizzeria is a pizza that has meat on it, lots and lots of meat, right? Herbs or herbs are things that you add to your food to give it flavor. It's also, um, so you can remember that with plants, herbs or plants. Omni means both. So they eat both plants and animals. We show the um, energy flow in an energy pyramid. A trophic level is the organization of the pyramid based on what it gets its energy from. So producers are the main level of the energy pyramid. Producers are the ones that give their energy to all of these things above it. Where do producers get their energy from? That's right, from the sunshine. And so the producers give their energy to the primary consumers. Remember in art class, if you've taken art, primary means first, secondary is second, tertiary is third, and quaternary is fourth. So these are the different levels. We have producers, and then we have the primary consumers. Primary consumers are all herbivores because they eat the green plants that are produced on the first level. So the primary consumers are then giving their energy to the secondary consumers. The secondary consumers are all um, carnivores. And then 
the carnivores or the secondary consumers give their energy to the tertiary consumers. So the tertiary consumers are also carnivores. They could also be omnivores. And the quaternary consumers get their energy from the tertiary consumers. So the, the way the flow goes is from producers up through the pyramid. So from the bottom to the top of the energy pyramid. Um, what makes up an energy pyramid? Producers, like I said before, get their energy from the sun. They make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. And they're also called autotrophs. So producers are autotrophs. They're on the very bottom of the pyramid. If this level of the pyramid disappears, then every other level above it disappears as well because the energy source is down at the bottom. It's the main level. It's the most important level. Then we have the primary consumers, which eat the producers. I think I've already gone through all of this. Um, the secondary and tertiary consumers eat the primary consumers, and they also eat each other. The carnivores eat other animals. The quaternary, quatro, quatro in Spanish is four, so you can remember that that's the fourth level. They're also called the apex predators. I should have said that. I forgot to say that. So quaternary consumers are the apex predators because they're at the top, which is an apex of the pyramid. Have you ever heard that word apex? So it's at the top of the food chain. It's the animal on which nothing else preys upon. So um Actually, we could put humans up here. Humans can eat the quaternary. Humans eat all of these things in different countries. Some people actually eat insects. Eh. If you've eaten a salad, you've eaten a producer also. Um, decomposers eat the dead stuff. They're the garbage man of the ecosystem. They are active at each level of the food pyramid, and they break down dead organisms and return the nutrients back to the environment. without decomposers, our earth would be littered with dead stuff and it would be gross and stinky and it would be horrible. So we are very thankful for the decomposers of the world that get their energy and nutrients from breaking down dead organisms and animal waste. They make the soil rich in nutrients. The worms, if you have ever had um, a, a garden, you know that worms are a very important component of a garden. Fungi or little um, mushrooms also decompose the stuff they grow on. Bacteria are important for decomposing dead organisms. Uh, let's see, did I go through everything? Yes. So how does the energy flow in an energy pyramid? The amount of energy in every level decreases by a factor of 10 as you go up the pyramid. So if we look at the primary consumers, they have 100% of their energy from the sunlight. And then some of that is used by the um, primary consumers. Primary consumers can get 10% of the energy from the primary producers. Most of the energy is used up as heat from every level as you go up. Lots of energy is released by heat energy. So... As you go up, you get 100% here, 10% at the first level, only 1% at the second level, and 0.1% at the third level. So a lot of the energy is lost through heat. That's what you need to know. Energy is measured in the J-O-U-L-E, the J-O-U-L-E, the unit for energy is J-O-U-L-E. Hey, um, kilocalories are also a measure of energy. One kilocalorie is equal to 4,184 joules of energy. And when we're talking about food, remember, it is going to be potential energy. Um, and energy is never created or destroyed. So this is showing that energy is used up by the animal's metabol metabolic processes like running, eating, finding mates, escaping danger. All the daily living uses up the energy that they get from their food. 90% is given off to the environment as heat. So we have 100% here. They can only use 10% of that. So 90% is given off as heat. The higher in the trophic level, the greater the concentration of toxins. So every time you go up a trophic level, 
you are going to multiply the toxins from the food 10 times. What? What does that mean? Those consumers who are on the top consume the toxins of each of the organisms below it. So the toxins of the um, producers are concentrated in the bodies of the mice as they eat that food. So if you eat something that has um, pesticide in it or herbicide, it's going to accumulate in your body. And so then these little guys here have a little bit of toxin from the producers that they ate. And then 10 times that is going to go to the consumers in this level here. And then multiply those toxins time 10 and it's going to go to the, the tertiary consumers. So the toxins are built up, built up, built up. 10 times every level. Pesticides are toxins, herbicides, mercury in the fish we eat, added hormones from our milk and dairy cows and whatever, and antibiotics. All of these things are toxins that build up in our food. So can you describe how energy flows through an energy pyramid? Which direction does the energy flow? That's right, it flows up, upwards from the bottom level to the top level. Do you understand the producer-consumer relationship? A producer is like something that does photosynthesis and a consumer is something that has to consume food in order to get their energy. A predator hunts down and kills the prey for food and prey is the hunted animal. So predators kill the prey. Producers make their own food through photosynthesis. They make food for all the organism. Um, all animals are consumers and they eat other organisms in order to obtain nutrients and energy to eat other or they have to eat organisms. Um, decomposers break down animal remains or waste to get nutrients and energy and they're recycled back for producers. So I hope that you learned something about food webs and food pyramids and producers, consumers, autotrophs, heterotrophs. And now you need to take the quiz um that is just a 10 point quiz next okay thanks email me if you have any questions mm -hmm.